Hello everyone! In my previous video, I discussed the computation of genotype frequencies when there is no dominance and codominance of alleles for a single locus with two alleles. This time, let's extend our discussion on the computation of genotype frequencies in the case of multiple alleles still under no dominance and codominance of alleles. Now, just like in the previous video, let's have a brief recall on multiple alleles. When we say multiple alleles for a single locus, um, we refer to a series of two genes or more. Or you can alternatively call this as alleles, which can occupy a particular locus on a chromosome such that instead of only two alternative alleles many alleles at a single locus uh, are present okay in a population of say for example of plants of animals and of a specific group of individuals but please take note that even if there are many alleles present at a particular locus each individual may have only one pair of genes at a particular locus and the individual must be either homozygous or heterozygous so i hope that's clear no for the definition or recall of multiple alleles now if you have already watched my video on variations in phenotypic ratios i mentioned one example of a trait there governed by multiple alleles and one of the most common examples used by biology or genetics books authors is the abo blood groups in man in this case there are three alleles so you have here alleles a b and o so with three alleles you have six possible genotypes this uh, genotype uh, homozygous a heterozygous homozygous b heterozygous b heterozygous a b and the homozygous o okay so these are the possible genotypes and these are the phenotypes that we can um, deduce from these genotypes okay so we have blood types a blood type B, AB, and O. So these are the possible blood types or possible phenotypes for these genotypes. Now moving on to the computation part, consider a locus with M alleles, that is A1, A2, and so on until A sub M alleles. The possible genotypes can be obtained by, by arranging the alleles so we have here a1 a2 until a m alleles in a two-way table so say for examples these are alleles that come from the uh, males these are the alleles that come from the females okay so we arrange that and then by combining these alleles from the fa from the females and from the males we get these genotypes say when we uh, combine a1 with a1 alleles we, we have genotype a1 a1 when we combine A2 and A1 alleles, we have A2A1 genotype and so on and so forth. So when we combine these things here with this here, we have the genotypes here in the cells, okay? Given, of course, with M alleles. Now let's proceed to getting the frequency of the genotype. Say we, we get the relative frequency of this genotype, A1A1, then we have two, of course, get the number of individuals having this particular genotype say for example we uh, denote or we assign n11 as the number of individuals with a1 a1 genotype then we can use this n11 in computing for the frequency of the a1 a1 genotype so it's just the same the formula is just the same uh, with the one that we used previously in a uh, recent video the most recent video that is the genotype frequency is equal to the number of individuals having that particular genotype all over the total number of individuals in that particular uh, population so by substituting uh, the um, symbols that we use we can uh, get the frequency of the genotype a1a1 so say for example we use the notation f for the frequency f a1 a1 which can also be synonymous with f11 and that can be um, computed by dividing n11 all over n so n11 again is the number of individuals with a1 a1 genotype and then n represents the total number of individuals in the population same is true for getting the frequency of other genotypes. So, say for example, you, went, you want to get the frequency of 
the A1, A2 genotype, this is how we get, and so on, and so forth. So that would be all for computing genotype frequencies for a single locus with multiple alleles. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you learned something.